Hey guys, um, welcome back. So after looking about the prophecies of the cross, I wanted to, to go over where did Jesus go? So um, anyway, as I was doing this study on my own, I have to confess, I listened to my grandpa's teaching of Luke 16, and it nearly brought me to tears. Actually, it did bring me to tears because um, a lot of the scriptures that I had already taken note of, he actually laid it off in a beautiful way. But he also talked about his, um, when he would die, that um, he doesn't want the reporters to say that he uh, died, but that he moved into his heavenly tent. And so that brought me to tears. Um, we know that he is in heaven, safe with Jesus, and uh, praise God. But before then, what happened? When Jesus died on the cross, um, well, prior to that, he prophesied in Matthew 12, 40 that the sign was given, and it said as Jonah was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so the Son of Man will be three days, three nights in the heart of the earth. So he tells us straight out where he went. He went down into the heart of the earth, and you think, what is there? Well, if you go back to um, his teaching in Luke chapter 16, um, you'll see that there is um, a story that he tells. Now, um, this is not a parable. Some people will put this in as a parable, but to the looks of it to me, um, he's actually discussing what actually happened in Abraham's bosom. So apparently in... Um, the heart of the earth, there's a place called Hades, which is we technically call it hell. And it's broken off into two compartments. One where Abraham was comforting all those who died by faith um, before Christ came. And they're all waiting there for Jesus and um, waiting for him to come and, and prove um, himself as God and raise again. Um, destroying death, you know, because it was impossible at that time that they had the sacrificial systems, but it was just a covering of sin. You see, nobody can see God at any time, you know, because he's so holy and he's so reverent, and the sin factor separates us from God. And so even though they had faith and even though things were accounted to them as righteousness, you can read Hebrews 11, um, it wasn't enough even the covering of the blood and the of the goats and the sheep and the sacrifices wasn't enough because it wasn't a perfect sacrifice. That's why Jesus had to die on the cross. He was the last sacrifice. He was the perfect sacrifice that came in and took all of our sins upon himself on the cross. That's why when he says it is finished, all the sin of the world was put upon him. And he became the ultimate sacrifice, paved in a way that our sins will still keep us from God. But that's why we need Jesus so badly in our lives, because he's the only one that can forgive sins and give us eternal life and have access into the Father. There is no other way. And so after... Um, the cross, he went down into Abraham's bosom and he preached to the people salvation. And for, it says three days and three nights. And then after that, um, you know, he rose again. And it says in Matthew 27, I alluded this to this before, but the timing I think I could have goofed up for you is when, um, after he ascended and rose, not, excuse me, not ascended, but resurrected, he led the captives captives, and it says in Matthew 27 that there was even um, the bodies of these old patriarchs were actually seen walking in the street. And so there was this um, letting out um, of what the prisons, the prison doors. In Isaiah 61, it says that he opened the prison's doors and set those captives free. And, um, and so this is what he did. He went down there and preached for three days there and then led them captive, captivity out of Abraham's bosom. Unfortunately, though, um, the other side of Hades, for those that did not believe in Christ and did not um, believe in God and did not have a faith in God, are still there. Um, this place is a place of torment, and this is why Jesus came. He doesn't want any one of us to, he doesn't want anybody should perish, but that everybody have everlasting life. And as you see from Luke 16, it's a place of torment, um, and you can't go back and forth. Your choice on earth 
sticks eternally. And that's why it's so important to preach the cross to people, to let them know that there's a choice here, either heaven or hell. And um, of course, Hades, this is not the eternal hell. Um, like It's called Gehenna in Revelation. This is the temporal zone until after Jesus establishes the thousand-year millennial reign. So Jesus went down there, and in Peter it says, um, he also s declares, because you're like, well, where else does it say it? First Peter 3.19 says that he preached to the prisoners. And Ephesians 4, 8 through 10 also says, it says, Wherefore, he that ascended on high led the captivity captive and gave gifts to the men. Now he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? So that is that confirmation of where did Jesus go? And he that descended, okay, that he went to the lower parts of the earth, that's where he is during, um, after that cross, that he then eventually ascended up far above all the heavens, that he might fulfill all things. So at this point in the story, we're talking about where is Jesus? Now Jesus is in Hades, preaching to Abraham's bosom. Abraham was there comforting people, letting them know, God is not going to leave us here. We are going to be able to get out of this place eventually. Even though that was a paradise place, it, was, it wasn't the tormented side, as you see in Luke 16. Um, Lazarus um, was a beggar who trusted in God and was able to go to Abraham's bosom, and um, the rich man was not. And um, unfortunately... Um, I find it very interesting even in this story because the rich man has full knowledge. He remembers what happened, you know, on his earth. And yet his heart was, please go back. Please go back and tell my family. If somebody would raise again from the dead, please tell them don't come. And so my encouragement to you guys is, you know, we need to really take what Jesus said about heaven and hell seriously because um, they're, they're real places. And the only way is to make the choice on earth is for heaven is to make it now on earth. You don't have time to wait until after you're gone um, from this place. So Jesus went down to the heart of the earth and he, and he you know, rose again three days later, just like he said. And I just want to say this also was a prophecy from David in Psalm 16:10. It says, For thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will you suffer thy holy one to see corruption. And, um, and Peter, um, after Jesus's ascension, so Jesus resurrects bodily resurrection in his glorified state and he walks around and that's what we love on Easter because without the resurrection, where's the preaching here, right? Um, he raises again and, um, then Peter later after he sees him ascend, he, like he goes up into heaven, they watch him go up into heaven and, um, Peter then stays in Jerusalem, and then when the Holy Spirit comes and baptizes them in the Holy Spirit, he gives this message to people, and he says, hey, we were eyewitnesses of the thing, but he also quotes here in Psalm 16, Jesus went down and preached that um, the captives down there would be set free, and so that's what he's doing in the midst of um, his death, to the resurrection, and then from the resurrection, we'll see what he does on earth before the full ascension, um, and then his promise to come back. So there's so many levels and so many stages, but where we are right now is very important to understand as we are celebrating um, this week of Jesus, and to understand, it is a hard thing to understand that um, there is a place called Hades, but Jesus has done everything he can from fulfilling prophecies, for giving us his word, to um, coming on this earth. You know, that's what we celebrate at Christmas time, that he came, that God came down to say, listen, enough is enough. You know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take away sin. I'm going to destroy it so that we can live together eventually forever in a beautiful beautiful place together and so God is doing everything he can and he's reaching out to you today and saying have you chosen me have you chosen me have you considered what I've done on the cross you know are you considering who I am and that I did this for you so that you can have um, a place in heaven with me eternal this corruption these bodies are going to take on incorruption and our immortality will take on um, I'm sorry our mortality will take on 
immortality. You know, our spirits and our, and our lives will live forever. But where they live forever is our choice. Do we want to live with Jesus forever in the beautiful things that he's created, the things that even he's prophesied are going to happen even after this earth, the thousand year reign, and then after that, the, the great white throne judgment, and then after that, he has more things for us? Or do you want to choose to not believe him? And don't let sin blind you. Jesus is real. And the only thing that's keeping you from from God in heaven is your sin and all you do is have to confess your sin to Jesus and say I'm a sinner you're right I have lied I have stilled I have stolen I I have less I have missed the mark of God's perfection but Jesus you promise if I confess my sins you're faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and set me as your child and in John 1 it says for those who receive Christ he's given them the right to be his child do you want to be his child today then ask him and let this time of Jesus on the cross, because he's preaching right now as we go through it, right now down in, in the Abraham bosom. They have to choose Jesus, and you have to choose Jesus if you want to live eternally with him. So the Lord bless you, and I just wanted to tell you, that's where Jesus went in between the cross and his resurrection. He is still preaching the beautiful things of, of the Lord and the beautiful things of heaven. So be blessed and know that Jesus is here to you, calling out to you, saying, hey, if you hear the knock on your heart, just open it up. I will show you great and mighty things that you have no idea of, but they're prepared for you. Do you want that? Receive Jesus today if you haven't. God bless you guys.